There we go. It bridges the gap right in front of the eclipse. Now, what is it bridging? It's bridging this gap. <laughs> That's the Pisces. Very weird. Is this getting weird? It's getting weird, right? Yeah. All right. Let's go. Let's get through all that. We just talked about it. So now there's an asteroid bridging the gap. And then we have this lovely symbol. <laughs> What's this symbol, Bob? Oh, you're the only person that's got that. Very good. It's also the Aleph, or Alpha, right? First. And it's a big A, which is standing for Anarchy. Ta-da! Ta-da! Okay, that was the first thing that I saw that I thought was really auspicious, was... <laughs> Wow, there's a symbol of anarchy going across America on the eclipse. But it takes all three eclipses, not just this one, but the one last October and the one in 2017. Again, this is getting a little head scratchy. What's going on? It's got my attention. Shall we continue? <laughs> Who are these guys? A bunch of Chinese guys. Right? Um, I spent two years in China, and that was actually all before the whole lockdown of the world. So, this is kind of interesting. Why are all these kind of soldier age Chinese immigrants crossing the border for the last three years? Maybe something's up. I don't know. When they're crossing the border, there's a very famous in the news border thing happening. Where is that? Texas. And we know the name of the town in Texas? Would it, they're afraid it's going to be a civil war? This was in the news maybe more a month ago. Maybe you saw that. It's uh, Texas, Eagle Pass, Texas. So there's people that are fighting in Texas to stop immigrants from coming across the border because they're finding all these kind of guys. Soldiers. What's that all about? Well, that's kind of like interesting. So there are other states and operations and soldiers coming to protect Texas. Basically, Texas is saying, you know, this to the federal government, saying, we may go rogue. We may have a civil war over something like this. Anyway, this is just what was being discussed mostly last month. So I'm just mentioning here only because. <laughs> Only because as it goes and starts in Mexico, it enters Texas in what town? Eagle Rest of my case. <laughs> That's kind of weird. Okay, good old USA. When was the USA born? 1776. July 4th, 1976, at 5, 10 p.m. precisely. All right, 1776. Declaration of Independence. That's kind of cool. So I'm just putting this up just because it's interesting. The USA has a birth chart. As an astrologer, we like to look at these things. We were curious of what is going on in America. Right? So I want you to pay attention to this guy. Does anyone know what that symbol is? Chiron. Chiron. What degree? Those with good vision. 20 degrees. Let's remember that. In Arizona, the total eclipse will occur on Monday, April 8th of 2024. The eclipse will begin at 10.08. Set your clocks, guys. 10.08, Arizona time. And reach its peak at 11.20. The eclipse ends at 12.35 p.m. Okay, that's just the, for your notes. So, what a great auspicious time to do something. Crack open a couple beers, I don't know, maybe something a little more useful. What can we do in that time period? Well, there are, there is going to be an event here, really cool, and they're going to be doing stuff all day. Holding peace, holding vigil, holding sacred space. So, come here if you're not doing anything. Or, 
Maybe you want to be in your own space or in a cave somewhere in Sedona. USA, April 8th, 2024. Let's put it all together. What the heck is this? Something's going on in the sky. We don't see this very often. In fact, we haven't seen it very often. It's super rare. We're looking at basically most of the planets. All in one area. Oh, this is again, or is this side? On this side. <laughs> anarchy symbol. So this is pretty this is pretty wacky. So what we can see in the sky are all, every one of them, every visible planet known to man. Visible planets. And there's even some invisible planets that you can't see because you need to have a very high power telescope. But in ancient days, we didn't have telescopes. We had naked eye observation. So this would have been something highly auspicious and unusual. Now, when you have planetary bodies in space, they create something called gravitational pull. And we have it here on Earth with oceans and tides. Just the moon. How about a super tide? How about a gigantic tide? How about all this alignment and weight affecting the earth and the waters? And what are we made of? Water. Are people kind of getting a little wacky lately? Yeah. Are you been feeling it? Yes. I know people here that was like, I love the calm, but I'm puking. I love the calm, but I'm just going through tremendous stress. So many wacky things are happening right now. And probably will, especially to you if you have something connected to this eclipse. Now, where is the eclipse? It's at 19 degrees Aries. The, the moon and the sun are conjunct in the sky. But remember what I told you to remember from the other chart? And if you look at this one, you'll notice that at 19 degrees Aries, exactly on the eclipse, is Chiron. What the heck is Chiron, and what does it mean when it shows up in your life? Well, I turned 50 in 2020, right smack dab in the very beginning of the lockdowns. I was in China, and they locked down first. And I got slammed and barely left there with my life. So much so quickly went into complete downward spiral to the point where I got the message loud and clear, get out now. And I did. I got on my phone and boop, boop, boop. I was out in two hours. And I haven't been back because I really don't want to go back right now. So what was going on? What is a Chiron return? A Chiron return, when you turn 50 in that time frame, you have Chiron coming back to its original position in the sky, that where you were born. It takes that long, but it moves slow. And what happens is it brings you to your knees quite often because it's going to get your attention where your most sacred wound is. Now, I'm, I've got Mars and Aries and my Chiron conjunctive. That's that go, go, go guy. That's the guy that can, you know, do a gig every month or three or four, you know, a day. My life is pretty busy in a small little town, somehow I'm quite busy doing things. And it's because of that Aries. I have a lot of drive, I have a lot of like go for it. That's why I ride motorcycles and sports cars and do that kind of stuff. I love it. And so speed, yes, sign me up. Okay. Aries is warrior, but it's also a spiritual warrior. Aries. This is what's happening to the U.S. chart. Do you realize that the U.S. chart has Chiron at 20 degrees? One, yeah, within one degree, this eclipse is hitting the USA chart to bring it to its Chiron return. It's fourth one, not just thing. So this is pretty auspicious, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So there's going to be a deep compassion healing with Chiron in the U.S. to everybody. But if personally you have something at 19 degrees Aries or within, say, 5 degrees of it, 
you're probably feeling this eclipse really strong and be compassionate with yourself. Your sacred wound is nothing, nothing I'm saying here is to scare you, it's to actually empower you. It was the most incredible thing that ever happened to me. Even though at the time, it was like Dr. Night of the Soul type of thing. But Chiron is amazing. It will, it's, it, it, it was the master teacher to all the demigods of Hercules and uh, Achilles. In fact, that's how it learned compassion was because Hercules misfired this arrow that Chiron taught him how to make poison that would kill a thousand men, shot his teacher and poor Chiron in the leg, he had to live as a mortal, as an immortal with a festering wound of pain every day. He developed compassion. Sounds like the story of Siddhartha, Herman Hesse, the Buddha. Whatever you want to get to, when we learn compassion, this is how it comes from this place. Okay, very good. Understand Chiron? At least a quick introduction. Very good. <laughs> this is interesting. What's this town called Rapture? <laughs> this was another one that I thought was, come on, this is getting ridiculous. Rapture? What? Right in the middle of Indiana? Oh, right where X marks the spot, in fact. Now it gets even more weird. Rapture is where the shadows cross, or the tab, or the mark, or the ending. Alpha Omega. Again, another kind of symbol to Jesus. And Nineveh. And Rapture. This is sounding very biblical, isn't it? Now, what is the Rapture to Christians? Kind of like you go, you get ascended, or you get up in a ship, or you're taken to heaven. So there's a lot of people in the world, especially in America right now, that are getting really excited that the rapture is coming. Okay? Just to put it out there, you may know people. And so this is why they're so excited, is all this biblical prophecy. Um, very interesting. Because we have to go back to this guy. Who got raptured in the Bible? Uh, Elijah. <laughs> Elijah, Missouri. Who else? Enoch, a couple times here. There have been characters in the Bible that have been raptured. And so, of course, they had to put rapture here. But there's something else right next door to rapture. It's called the Ark Museum. Noah's Ark. And so, when I did a little stellarium and looking for asteroids, of course, blood showed up. Now, this gets a little bit even more strange. <clears throat> See, here's the Ark. I'm not going to read that. But here's Rapture. Here's the Ark in the blood. Does this have to do with anything? has to do with this. This is not to put fear into you. This is to inspire you into synchronicity. This is a prophecy. This is to warn you. This is to get you right with who you serve. This is to find your light within. Whatever level that may be for you as a spiritual cosmic being. But this it's called the New Madrid Fault Line, and it happens to be right where it is showing it. X marks the spot. You can't make this up, folks. How on earth that the shadow of this X marks the spot is going to cross at the New Madrid Fault Line? Now, what's auspicious about this? Besides the obvious. <laughs> All right, let's go back to some story and some history. George Washington, Eclipse, 1778. And that's only a couple years after the birth chart, right? But something was going on at that time. Remember what was going on? The American Revolution, right? So this gets into a little bit of that. And I'm not going to read it because you already have the point. Here's another auspicious thing. Hmm, what's this? Thomas Jefferson in the 1811 Constitution Day Eclipse. Another 
war had broken out. It seemed like every time an eclipse passes over poor America, there's been some level of war. But this one was different. Because something else happened in 1811 that you may not know. Between December 16, 1811 and late April 1812, a catastrophic series of earthquakes shook the Mississippi River Valley. Towns were destroyed. An 18-mile-long lake was created. And even the Mississippi River temporarily ran backwards. Mind blown. Okay, <laughs> what the heck is going on? i got to tell somebody about what's happening to me and why I'm getting all this download. And I'm um, scratching my chin and I'm going, things that make you go, hmm. And I'm feeling there's some synchronicity happening. This is not just scary. There's more to come. Okay? Don't get scared. Please. This is not fear monger. This is just that. You ever seen this map? The Michael Scalley map? Mm -hmm. I should, so this was a map years ago. I remember when I came, I came from 30 years ago. It's kind of, it's been a while. But when I got here, there's all these kind of maps and different presentations. And I was just so tired and all these kind of things. I remember seeing this map. Chet Snow was talking a lot about this map. Anyway, look at Mississippi River. What's going on with the Mississippi River in this map? Pretty wild. The country is divided in half. <clears throat> this hasn't come to pass, but it's prophesized. It's possible. Especially if what happens? The last slide. Who created that map? Michael Scallion. This was a channel map of the future US. Oh, years ago, like in the I can't remember. Look it up. Michael Scallion. I can't remember. I'm holding it up in my hand, please. So, here we go. <laughs> Michael Scallion. Oops. Earthquake. Oops. Nineveh. Oops. Sign of Jonah. Oops. I'm going to get swallowed by a whale for three days. Maybe I'll change my mind. Maybe I'll pay attention to something. Oops. <laughs> now, this is another fun one. You heard about this one? The cicadas? Cicada map of what's going to happen. This hasn't happened in 200 years. <laughs> that the cycles of cicadas are all going to be birthed out of the ground. Where? Well, on the map. All this as above, so below is on the map. It's as above, so below. Now, in the Bible, one of the plagues of Egypt and Moses and warning the Pharaoh was. It's going to be what? Locusts. Locusts, a plague of insects. And it happened. No one paid attention. It just so happens this is going to happen any day now. Definitely possible during this eclipse. Which could block out the sun. Enough. It's crazy amount. This hasn't been seen in 200 years. It's already been starting with crickets. If you just look up the crazy insect stuff going on right now, this is happening. Another sign. What's this? Little Egypt. What's going on in Little Egypt? Little Egypt is in America. It's in Illinois. What is famous in Illinois that would have to do with Little Egypt? And why do they call it that? Anyone know? Ever heard of these? <laughs> well, I guess you have it because right there in writing the book says the forgotten pyramids of Illinois. It is forgotten. So much that barely anybody knows. But there are pyramids all over this area. That's why it's called Little Egypt. It's also along the Mississippi, which is similar to the Nile. So look at the size of that. That's giant. That's huge. That's America. Yeah, pyramids in America. Bones. Wow. Look how many. Oh my God. That's quite a few pyramids. 
Who's this stuff on? I've been to them. When I would drive across the country. Mostly in the past. Well, that's why it's called Belize. And it's, yeah. All of those. Yes, right along the path of the coast. Yes, that's the point of this lecture. I'm teasing you, but yes, it's, it's in the past. So once again, some weird correlations with pyramids and Egypt and plagues and prophecy. Now what's this all about? Who, who heard of this? Historic chance of clouds on the eclipse. They were saying this two weeks ago. Who the hell predicts weather three weeks, four weeks out? Have you ever heard of a weather report that long and telling people, hey, it's going to be cloudy in four weeks? Okay, now that's brandy, folks. <laughs> we're going to get into some of that. I want to talk about some of that. And we will. This is the beginning of it. How does the weather report know this? Why would they report it? Eclipse. Oh, all right, this is redundant. Okay, ooh, who does weather stuff? Who does space stuff? Okay, NASA, of course. No, NASA's an interesting story. We, I could spend a lot of time. Right? Not, a, not a space agency. Or, if you look at the Hebrew, it means to deceive. <laughs> now, do you ever wonder what that red line is going through the logo? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> do you ever see that photo? Isn't that interesting? What is the red line? What is the What happened? It turns. Assholes. That's funny. <laughs> Nassholes. Ha ha. Love you, Dad. Dad. Is she going to Transformation. Rebirth. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, it's all over the place. Wow. So, anyhow, I could go down a whole rabbit hole with you about NASA. And who started NASA? You know who started NASA? Anyway, NASA is showing up in Forbes. Now, this is not like a, you know, Daily Mail, like this is Forbes. And Forbes is saying that, interestingly enough, NASA is going to shoot three rockets into the eclipse from Virginia. Did you know this? What a great idea. Let's shoot three rockets into the eclipse that everybody's so worked up about and all these auspicious earthquakes. And, you know, why not? Let's just watch three rockets. And let's call it Serpent Deity. <laughs> I don't know what NASA has to do with a serpent. Oh, maybe I do. The slide before. What? Let's do, oh, well, if that's not enough. Accelerated report from CERN. Beams are circulating. They've already started. And it's supposed to peak on what day? The eclipse, of course. What is going on, folks? Why are these mad scientists doing weird things? What is the logo of CERN? 666. 666, go figure. Are we getting the message? Are we seeing that there's a crazy group of weird, not so nice people? Now, what I didn't get into earlier on, I'm going to back up for you, because I like you. Let's go here. Let's go here. Okay, now we're, let's go back to this. Okay. 12 key parts, Brooks. Who knows about that? You, you don't count properly. You live with it. <laughs> it was nicknamed, it, first of all, it's an ask, it's a, it's a, sorry, sorry, sorry. It's a comet. It's a comet. So that means there's going to be a comet in the sky that you'll see with your naked eye once you're in the eclipse shadow. Mm. It's going to get dark enough. And all those planets that I said earlier, the whole, shoot, all of them, that you can see with the naked eye will be visible. And a comet. What? Do we need more signs? There's a comet in the sky. And where is it? Aries. Right on the path of the eclipse. Aries. I thought it was the end of the 
you know what the comet was nicknamed last year when it grew horns? Devil's Comet. Devil's Comet. You can't make this stuff up. Serpent deity, Devil's Comet. How about here? Aries. There's an asteroid here called Lucifer. What the fuck? In the ramp. It just gets weirder and weirder and weirder. So there's a comet called the Devil. Bridging the gap. Bridging is the asteroid. Oh, I didn't say I didn't mention this. There's also an asteroid called China in Taiwan. Right on the path of the eclipse as well. If you don't believe me, I can show you one stellium. I want to see it. You do? Yep. What time? How's our time? <laughs> How are you guys? Great. Do you care if we go over a little bit? No. Okay. Keep going? You guys having a good time? You're not, you're not scared, right? No, I'm so happy. I'm so happy. Okay, let's go to Stellarium. Okay, here we go. So, this is Stellarium. This is the internet. You can all go to Stellarium.com and do this yourself if you don't believe me. Here's the day of the eclipse. Now, what's going on is I have a search bar up here. So, say I want to search for something. Try I put that in there. Oh, look what shows up right away. Boop. And there it is. The asteroid chart. Where? Where? Right on the moon. Just right on the line. Moves. Right near Rome. <laughs> Not too far from Venus. Okay. That's pretty cool. A little Taiwan. That's in the news. Because I think China wants to take over Taiwan again. And so let's go put Taiwan. Oh, main asteroid belt. Asteroid. There it is. A little further up on the cliff there. Right where the water bear is dumping its water. Kind of like what? Kind of like, hey, how about this is not going to be in the mind of Randy in her freedom of movement. <laughs> Are you paying? Maybe some of you are already connecting the dots. Okay, Chinese immigrants crossing the border look like soldiers. There's a New Madrid fault line that could have an earthquake to flood the middle and separate the United States, hmm, maybe something's going on with China and Taiwan. Maybe, just like Lahaina, there could be something besides natural disasters. Maybe disasters aren't so natural anymore. So anyone who's been paying attention to that knows what I'm talking about. I'm not going to get into a bunch of conspiracy. But Makes you go, hmm, what's going on? Because right after that happened in Lahaina, did you hear what happened in Chile? Almost identical. And it has to do with 15 minute cities, folks, which comes from a very weird thing called the WEF, or the World Economic Forum. It's a really strange, self appointed elite. If you don't know what the World Economic Forum is, check it out. I'm not going to go too deep into that. But they create world leaders like Justin Trudeau and other people. Um, Macron, all these guys. Ger German, what's their name? <laughs> Can't think right now. Anyway, you get the point. What if there was something about this eclipse over the USA that could be taken advantage of? That could be a kick them when you're down situation. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm not going to be close. Mm -hmm. I just, you know, I trust Allah, but I tie my camel, <laughs> so to speak, right? <laughs> trust in Allah, tie your camel. <laughs> why not? Mm -hmm. Doesn't hurt. Plus, I've been there, done that, I've seen the eclipse. This is weird. I just, there's just too much stuff right now that's not making me want to go to a tailgate, tailgate party in Texas with the eclipse. I'm not feeling it. If anything, I'll be here or I'll be in a cage. We're going to be like holding space, meditating, and probably chanting. And I'm going to get to that good stuff in a little bit, okay? So far, so good? Yes. Get to how this could be a, dare I say it? Oh, okay, I'll say it. There's, this could be a mass sacrifice event. 
Because all they got to do is direct something at that new Madrid ballpark. And that's where everybody's, how many people are lost, uh, going to this? Millions. Why are they predicting, why are they closing down all the schools? What? Why are they saying to stock up on food, water, and gas? Well, because last time this happened, there were traffic jams along the path that were so bad, people had to abandon their cars and walk. Then they're expecting way more this year because they're hyping the heck out of this. Now, also, if you get a million and bunch of more people all coming into one place. That creates weight. <laughs> now, isn't there already enough of a weight gain and thing happening with all the planets? Let's add millions more humans. I think we have some work to do as a Sedona crew to really focus on light and love and harmony and exuberance and ecstasy like those whales teach us. This, it may be a good idea to really come together as a community and hold some super awesome power of love and life to this event. Not fear mongering, saying, hmm, maybe I'll take the warning. Let's go back to the PowerPoint. And we're we are done. We're almost getting done. We're, 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 we're in a... We're really close. Okay. We talked about that. Next slide. Okay. So basically, it's just Sir again saying the same thing about the April Bates. Oh, who's this weirdo? All right. This is a weird guy. Do you know about Did you ever see this picture? This is a famous picture by Lester Crowley. Who was Lester Crowley? The Beast. The wickedest man on earth. What the heck does he have to do with NASA and the sea cliffs? Well, let's read. So on April 8th, the day of the solar eclipse, CERN will be starting up again. On April 8th, 1904, Lester Crowley made contact with an alien entity called IWAS, and it was this entity that dictated Crowley's book of law. Is CERN trying to make contact with this demon? This gets into some weird stuff about CERN opening portals. And I'm just going to just put that right there. Do your own research about CERN. I'm concerned about CERN. And I've been concerned about CERN. And I've been to CERN. I've been to the I've been right there, right in ground zero. And it's weird. Did you need this one? Okay, here's another recent one I just saw. What does Liberty, Light, and Lucifer have in common? Oh. Survey says? L. <laughs> Kapow! What just happened? What just happened? Kapow! <laughs> what just happened? This just happened. When? Wow. Like last week or something crazy? It was like really recent. Like really, when was it? Yesterday. It was like within a few days. It just happened. Is that a Look it up. Is that a ball? Hey, let's not get lost in the minutia. Let's stick to the big topics here. I'm holding it up in my mind right now. For this. Okay. What is Lucifer, Liberty, Light, or Lightning? What do these three things have in common? You ever see this? Oh. Check this out. This is kind of interesting. Have you ever noticed the Statue of Liberty isn't very ladylike? Right. She looks kind of like a man. Huh? Don't get me in trouble. People, please. But it looks a lot like the famous artwork of Lucifer. Who is what? And what does loose mean? It means light. It's a light bearer. It was a fallen archangel. Gets weird, right? Is, do we need some more signs? Maybe. <laughs> okay, what's this now? What is this? All right. This is getting even weirder. Okay, that's the end of the PowerPoint. Now we're going to shift over to you. What is that? Uh, 
We're going to get to that guy. Hold on. <laughs> oh, let's talk about this. Okay, here we go. Ba, 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 ba. Doop, ba, doop. Here we go. Sorry I've been echo, I don't know why it's so echoey, but it is. The aurora, those beautiful lights dancing across the sky, is just one way that shows our sun is an active star. But the sun is in the process of getting even more active. It's called Solar Cycle 25. We expect it to peak sometime in the next two years. So it'll probably, it'll probably peak this year, but the activity will remain high throughout 2024 and much of 2025. Dr. Mark Meech explains that solar cycles occur roughly every 11 years when sunspot activity increases on the surface of the sun. Solar cycle 25 began December of 2019 and is one of the strongest cycles in decades. In the next few years, this year and next year, we're expecting the highest activity in about 20 years, over 20 years. So that was before the iPhone was invented. And think how we've changed since then. Solar storms associated with these solar cycles can impact satellites, GPS, even radio, as well as the industries that use them. So as we become more reliant on technology, space weather has more of an impact. The sun has been doing this for uh, as long as we can determine, for at least 10,000 years. And so the sun hasn't changed, but we have. But that doesn't mean we have to panic. Researchers and forecasters know how to work with industries so they can take precautions and protect the technology we are still relying on. And while we may not see the Aurora dance at the fourth, there may be some hope to see it here. There will be a few opportunities in the next two years, I would say, to, to see something from as far south as North Carolina. Okay. We got upgraded. Solar Maximum was supposed to be in 2025. They just moved it up a year recently. And now it's 2024. They're right smack dab in the middle of it. Whose phone's been going out? What kind of weird stuff is happening in your life with phones and electronics? And... So these kind of things, they happened before. I don't have to go too deep into it. But solar flare activity is also at its maximum right now. And they're working with this. This is why they're also shooting serpent DV up into the sky. They want measurements. Or maybe something else. I don't know what they're doing. It just feels weird. And so what's happening with this stuff is solar flares can knock out the grid like that. What would happen, and if you've never pondered this, could you imagine a giant EMF wave, electromagnetic wave, that would take out the power grid? It's happened before. We rely on it now a lot more than we did in the 1800s. It would be devastating. Planes would fall from the sky. Ships would just crash into the shore. Gee, that reminds me of something. Did anyone see the Netflix movie? Yeah. Leave it all behind? <laughs> Well, if you haven't, you didn't get a chance to do it. Hey, who's that? Statue of Liberty! Woo! This is a preview for a thing all behind. It's all messed up. What could it mean? It could be over in a couple of hours. You know something? I'm sure this will turn out to be a big nothing. I'm going to test the car. It's a bad one this one day, and I have to guarantee it. Oh! Oh! Okay, how 
Seen Dune. Hey. Oh. All right, we'll get to Dune next. But let's just, before we do Dune, let's just finish that thread with the, uh, the EMF and this whole cosmic wave or solar wave or disaster. Guys, what just happened with the boat? The, yeah. The bridge, you mean? The bridge in the boat? Yeah. Oh, you don't know? No. Um, Star Spangled Bear Banner, the Mer America, right? What is it? Who wrote it? Uh, yeah. Scott, I always say Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore got hit by a boat, a tanker, a cargo ship, just like what we just saw in the movie. Mm -hmm. And this isn't only one case. It's been I've already seen three reports since that happened. This was last week, folks. Ships are running ashore. It's getting weird. Planes are falling from the skies. That's also in that movie. Guess what happened today on one I-17? Mm -hmm. Do you know a plane no. landed on the highway of I-17 right now? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I just found out. And out, I was putting this together. I was putting about 10 of these slides together at the last minute. And that came through. <laughs> Leave it all behind. Check out the movie. Good movie to watch. Dune! I love Dune. Dune is cool. Dune is a symbol of what? Yeah. What's the, what, what the heck is Dune a symbol of? What's, what's the logo of Dune? Ta-da! An eclipse. It's an eclipse. Okay, so that's kind of auspicious, right? right. Why is Dune a symbol of an eclipse? Why is Hollywood doing it? Why was it the Dune 2? What the heck? Why were they showing eclipses? What is Dune about? It's like a really weird novel written in the 60s. What's going on? Why is Dune trending? It's got a great soundtrack because it's Hans Zimmer and Tina Quo. Maybe. Dune is trending because it's a story literally about a messiah. Literally. They call him the messiah. In fact, Dune 3, guess what the title's going to be called? The Messiah. I'm not trying to give away. Anyone care if I give a little away? No. What do you call that when you give away a movie? Yeah. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert. <laughs> spoiler alert. <laughs> okay, spoiler alert. Dune has eclipses in it. Dune is about this incredible kind of anti hero, almost in some ways. In some ways, he's a hero. But basically, Paul Atreides, the House of Atreides, this is, he is prophesized. So there's prophecy in the movie. Who prophesizes it? Well, kind of like the witches. The Bene Gesserit. Oh, sounds like Jesuit. I don't know. I'm not going to on those. But anyway, you can get it. It's very synchronistic. And there's these eclipses. And it's during these eclipses in the second movie where Paul comes into his power and he starts to believe maybe he is the Messiah. And the movie goes into, in his name, a holy war. Word for word. Maybe go watch too. What's going on? What are they fighting for? The dust. They're fighting for spice, which is kind of like drugs in a way. But anyway, it's really weird. It's really weird synchronicity. I put it here because it's another weird synchronicity. But then it got weirder for me last week because I was sitting having dinner with friends talking about the eclipse. And one of the guys was like, hey, I have some information on the eclipse when I walked in. Oh, so do I. So I'm like, let's, let's, let's talk about the eclipse. And I started downloading all this kind of stuff. And he was saying, oh, you should check out this movie called, new on Netflix, Three Body Problem. <laughs> well, if you haven't, here's the opening scene of Three Body Problem. This is how it opens. One, two, three. All right, three body problems. You got the idea? Three bodies coming together, which is what? An eclipse. Earth, moon, sun. Three body problem is a physics conundrum where you cannot predict what is going to occur over time when you have three planetary bodies. Again, a little spoiler alert, but it's basically the story, the, the gist of this documentary, or not documentary, excuse me. Oops. 
series. <laughs> and it's, it's got eight parts right now. More are coming, I guess. But we'll see. So anyhow, it's really weird. Because it starts off with CERN. And CERN in science is broken. And there's this group of quantum physicists that are like committing suicide over it. Anyway, check it out. I'm not going to get too deep into it. But it's another big, weird synchronicity. And the opening scene, or trailer, let's go to the trailer. Here we go. It's already up. This is out. Watch your Netflix tonight. I have to tell you something. Something insane. The truth. All about all of us. It started a long time ago. We are coming to a close. Um, one more interesting last closing remarks. Let's go to this. Okay, so this is put out. So I saw a document. Anything about this eclipse I've been paying attention to. I already binge watched the eight hours of Free Body Problems. Now we got this guy, Sasha Stone, who's been in Sedona, he's coming to Sedona, he's been part of Conscious Life Expo. I know him because I hung out with him in, in Bali when I lived there in 2015, this New Earth project. So I'm going to be working with him again soon, so he comes in uh, just about a, a week or something, or a couple yeah. weeks. And anyway, really fantastic guy doing some awesome work on the planet as far as consciousness. <laughs> so he is working with a scientist in Mexico at the Zone of Silence, which is this mountain that looks like a fetus in the middle of Mexico, which just so happens to be where the eclipse is going to be at its maximum of 4 minutes, 28.1 seconds. And they're going to be doing something there. Why? And what are they doing? They're going to be chanting and vibrating and humming the sound of C4 on a piano, mm -hmm. C4 drone, C4. Okay. See? And going into the most loving, empowered, whale consciousness, mm -hmm. love consciousness, harmonic resonance, heart now, everything that we've been learning about for years. When we become coherent in the heart as humans, mm -hmm. it happened during 9 11. Mm -hmm. It spikes the measurement panels. The amount of love and compassion people felt during that spiked it. And that's how HeartNath started getting really well known. 
when humans come together, or those whales come together with their heart chakras and sing the song from year to year, evolving as they go, as humans, we can do that dance together and be in celebration. So they're gonna do that in Ground Zero, and it's a global meditation. And this is a little video on it, so it's only two minutes. I'll show you. There's our whales. How's that? Q&A? You have some questions? 